Hey everybody, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Uh, in this episode, we're going to cover lots of different things. We're actually going to start off with some scripture, but then we're going to move into a lot of serious topics in regards to fuel and energy shortages and food shortages and a little bit about Trump. Before I get to all that, if anyone missed my prior live stream, you can have some fun at my expense. <laughs> so as you know, I go through a lot of tabs on these live streams. And I guess apparently at around 42 minutes, there was a, a Twitter video that I was playing and it had some techno background music. And when I moved to the next tab, it kept on re-looping. Uh, so everyone on the live stream had a little bit of a techno dance party uh, on my live stream for 20 whole minutes. So again, if you want to have some some fun at my expense, uh, go look at my prior video at around 42 minutes. It was completely unbeknownst to me, but apologies for that. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. All right, so without any further ado, let's just look at some scripture as we contemplate some of these major crises that are looming ahead of us. Like some people are saying like this is going to get real uh, within a month unless something changes. Uh, but again, we shouldn't fear these things, but we need to put it contextually um, with regards to scripture. So going on over here to the screen share, I think starting at Matthew 5 is a really, a really good place as we think about how the Lord deals with the world. The world has had it really, really good for a long time. You know, there, there has been periods of suffering and there's segments of the population that are always suffering. But on par, you know, as a whole, the world has had it really, really good. And Matthew 5, 43 through 45 says, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For... He makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. That's what the Lord is doing. When everyone is judged, come to the judgment seat of God. People are going to know how God treated them fairly, how he you know, provided everyone, both the evil and the righteous, with good things. And he's given, you know, lots of opportunity for people to repent. And so as we think collectively or holistically about the world, the world has, again, gone through lots and lots of sin and continues to press in into rampant sin. And the God, and God for a long time has you know, given people um, Lots of, of wonderful things, peaceful times without war, um, food security, uh, you know, shelter and homes. He's, he's given it to everyone. But now he's taking it away. As Lamentation says, we've covered this chapter before, chapter 3, going through verses 37 and 41. Who has spoken and it came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come? Why should a living man complain, a man, about the punishment of his sins? Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. Covered this many times. All throughout the Old Testament, when Israel was in sin, God was not with them. And they lost battles and they had pestilence and famine and if they were smart and reflected on what was happening to them spiritually they realized that the lord was not with them because of their sin both good and bad come from the lord he allows bad things to happen as punishment for sin but a lot of people aren't seeing that you know a lot of people aren't saying that this is coming from the lord and it's punishment or judgment against the world. People are saying that this is at the hands of the evil elite. Uh, this is at the hands of government. We just need to replace them with a Judeo-Christian um, Judeo uh, type of government going back to the founding fathers and get rid of this evil empire. And that's what God wants from us. You know, as Roman says, you know, if you disobey authority, if you try to topple 
um, government and authority. You are actually rebelling against God. Because just as good and bad both come from the Lord, the Lord sets up all kings. Some people don't really want to believe that, but the Lord puts in place all kings. He appoints all kings. And for the tyrants that he puts in place, it is for punishment. It is for judgment. And if you rebel, again, it is rebelling against the Lord. Because, again, I think a lot of what's happening to the world is for judgment. It is for punishment. And so, where are we at now with every good thing looking like it's going to be taken away? Because there's some major crises that are on the horizon, and soon. I want to look back at the Exodus story and how Israel went out of Egypt and initially they celebrated that the, their God had delivered them. But then, as the title implies in the English Standard Version of Numbers 14, the people rebel. Numbers 14, verse 1, Then all the congregation ra- raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night, and all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, Let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. I mean, just think about this. Especially as you think about like the baby Um, food, the formula shortages and things. You know, they had little ones. They had wives. They cared about them just as we care about our families. And they're saying, did the Lord really lead us into this? Is this this really what his plans were for us? Because we're dying out here. And, you know, the Lord says to Moses in regards to all this rebellion, even though he's provided that, he's shown them miracles, he's provided them with manna, The Lord says to Moses, how long will this people despise me and how long will they not believe in me in spite of all the signs that I've done among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them and I will make you a nation greater and mightier than they. Now Moses intercedes for them and uh, basically God withholds his wrath. But again, the people have everything taken away from them. They go into the wilderness, into a time of testing. They only have a single thing to eat at that point. They have water. God provided them water by miracle. He's provided them manna from heaven, which is a miracle, but again, a single food source, enough to sustain them, but they don't really have anything else. Every good thing that they had in Egypt was taken away. And they feel... Like they're at the point where they're going to die in the wilderness, in this time of testing, in the desert. And they rebel. And so think about us in this time of testing as, you know, this is a typology that uh, I should have brought up the verse, but the, the Bible speaks about this. It may be in Hebrews talking about our walk being one in the wilderness in a time of testing similar to um, Israel walking through the desert and their time of testing in the wilderness. There's going to be a point in time where, you know, as Matthew said, God poured out blessings on the entire world, not just the righteous, but the evil. But now it's a time of punishment. It's a time for the Lord to, you know, take away things so that some people might repent, come to their senses and repent. But for the people that bear the name of brother and sister and bear the name of being a Christian, We're going to go through some very difficult times. Do not rebel. And again, you have to think about the definition of what rebellion is. It's not just, you know, uh, negating Christ or like abandoning Christ. I mean, just look at what they did in the wilderness. They were grumbling. They thought that they were abandoned. He was sustaining them just with what they needed, not much more. And yet, you know, they're saying... We just need to go back to to where we were. And they actually, I didn't highlight the verse here, but look, Numbers 14.10, Then all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Moses and, and Joshua, the son of Nun, they were going, they wanted to stone them. And what do we see 
What do we see today? Again, here you have people you know, taking out their anger and, th- and their frustration on those who led them. And you see it again today that either these very terrible circumstances are going to drive you to the point of where or a lot of people, you're going to have very little hope in material things or other people. And it should drive you into the hands of the Lord, asking him to sustain you through all this. That's the righteous path. But again, a lot of people, similar to the Israelites, wanting to stone Moses, they're instead looking at the government leadership, which again, government is an institution that was put in place by God. People, as I've shown you in lots of different videos, they're bringing out fake gallows, they're bringing out uh, fake guillotines, they're, they're bringing out these things and everyone's showing their absolute hatred of government and the elites, which is justifiable. It's not like they're doing anything good for, for anyone, but you have to look, examine these things spiritually. People want to stone them. People want want to just completely overthrow government for what they're doing to them. But again, we have to know that this is a time of testing. So anyways, we, we really need to keep that in the context spiritually of everything that I'm going to share with you for the rest of this video. Now, I entitled this, what did I entitle this? That the collapse is common knowledge. I actually borrowed that. It's a little tongue-in-cheek because not everyone uh, thinks that a collapse is coming. But I say that the collapse is common knowledge because I don't think there's anyone that, that hasn't at least heard of it. I mentioned previously, there's a lot of people not taking it seriously. There, There's some people that might be taking it seriously, but are in a sense of denial. But Peak Prosperity, secular channel, I find he's really balanced. Not to, um, he, he doesn't really embellish much. He's, he's very well researched. So he said the same thing, for, food shortages, now common knowledge. And he just has a couple of articles here from mainstream media. Um, CNN Business, The Week, and you know, these these articles, these titles, they don't just say you know food shortages for third world countries or you know some of the most impoverished countries. It's things like this opinion: the world is on the brink of a food shortage. The world, the week, the looming catastrophe of the global food shortage, food shortage by design. This is exactly the same types of things that I'm seeing in my circles. I mentioned to you before that uh, I made my very first purchase from Azure Standard and had my dog with me. And there was a lot of people that wanted to pet the dog. And so that was an easy way to engage in conversation with tons of people. Probably talked to about 15 different people. Every single person was essentially aware of all the world events and inferred that they were prepping. I've got family members who (laughs) never were on board with um, this whole prepper channel and prepping and things like that and and they're starting to store food i have people at work openly talking to me about how they're starting to put away food it and and here's you know uh, i should have i should have really gotten this scripture up here actually i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up in a new tab while i'm talking to you about this there's there's this concept of like an inflection point in stock markets You know, as the market goes up and up and up and up and up, slowly the general populace is like, oh, okay, I need to get in on this. But at that point in time, you know, they want to get in on it because they feel secure. They've seen it run up for so long and they've just really didn't want to assume the risk early on. You know, they wanted a stable pattern and now it's an okay time to get in. But unfortunately, what happens most of the time is, once everyone starts to get, get that comfort level and starts to buy in, then then it goes down. Or you, you can think about this with regards to prepping. You know, there's a point, you know, there's, there's, this, there's this inflection point where more and more and more and peop, more and more people are all wanting to go and store food and prep. Again, I've had family members, I've had, there's, there's actually a lot of people that are my Facebook friends. Some of them may be watching this video. And I've had at least five different friends uh, who I'm friends with because we're all Christians and we fellowship, but we've never talked about prepping before. It was all just explicitly fellowshipping and Bible study. 
and at least five different people are all talking to me about Mike, how do I how do I how do I prep? What do, what do I store? Uh, there's there's some pre-tribulation friends. I'm not uh, a pre-tripper, uh, but I still fellowship with some people that are. And there's some people that used to say, you know, I'm I'm not needing to prep. I'm not needing to do anything. I think the Lord's going to take us out of here before then. But now they're seeing all these things, and they're like, well, maybe there's going to be some hard times before that happens. Maybe I should be prepping. So again, there's lots and lots of different and diverse people that are all starting to say, we need to start putting something away. And it's because the signs of the times have really started to pick out more and more and more. And with that stock market analogy, you know, when you get to this collective movement of people doing a certain thing, like either buying into the market because they, they know it's a good time, or again, collectively people are all starting to like prep and, and save food. I, I think it's an indication of like where we're at. I don't know exactly when the big one is going to happen, when the big collapse is going to happen. But as I'm going to show you with a lot of these tabs here, there are some serious crises on the horizon. Um, but anyways, the, the verse that I wanted to pull up for you that I don't have right now is um, actually an ax. Uh, maybe I'll just get it towards the end of this live stream because I don't want to lose my thought. But an ax, there was a word from the Lord to the saints that said that there was famine coming. And so the saints diligently saved up money and food for and, and they gave it to the saints in Jerusalem to prepare them for the famine. Uh, I know I'm friends with some pastors. There's one pastor in Indiana, and I know he's intentionally saving food for his congregation and others. I really do think we have a, a word from the Lord, even though a lot of people of the world are getting into prepping and storing food. I mean, I think explicitly that many people in the church have a conviction that we need to you know, physically prepare to some degree. Uh, I don't want to lose sight as well as in the prior videos that not everyone can prep. There's some people that are financially burdened. There's some people that have all sorts of circumstances. So you need to follow your faith with that. There's some people that are going to have a direct word uh, word from the Lord, not hearing him directly, but you know you have conviction from the Lord that you need to prep. And you may not be prepping just for yourself. You may be prepping for the person that has very little. And for the person that has very little, your faith may be saying, you know, God's saying, be still. I'm going to take care of you. And so, again, two individual faiths, a person is told to prepare and they follow the faith. The person that doesn't have the means to is told to be still. And both those faiths come into one where the Lord, the Lord joins you all together. So, again, that's, that's very, very critical. But, again, I do think many of us are starting to get that conviction um, to prepare. And perhaps because I've had so many friends ask me, uh, maybe I will do just one video on, on just how to get into this on a basic level because the one thing you don't want to do is panic and worry um, because again you can start to become in bondage to this there's so much to think about like if there is true collapse I mean we don't even really recognize all the nice things and amenities we have um, again it can get it can lead to bondage and I don't want to uh, have that be a stumbling block here for your faith so maybe that will be a separate video anywho getting into what's going on so I didn't cover this in the last video, but there is a significant risk of major diesel shortages. Originally, this is going to happen on the East Coast, but obviously this is a continual supply chain coast to coast. So this is going to in fact, uh, impact everyone, especially with prices. But there's a diesel shortage, mostly caused by you know the whole... Um, situation going on with the bear country and, and all them. Um, but Loves is monitoring the situation. And actually, I think this is a better article where we're just going to take two to three minutes here to look at a local news company. So again, talking about collapse being common knowledge, local news, um, no, local newscasters everywhere are all starting to cover lots of these things, baby food shortages, um, food insecurity, uh, uh, lots of prices inflating way higher than what they said in the CPI. 
Um, but here they're talking about diesel shortages and lots of truckers saying that they're actually finding stations that are completely out on the West Coast. Diesel fuel prices across the country and here in Maryland continue to surpass all time highs. There is another huge issue that is now on the radar, the possibility of diesel fuel shortages here on the East Coast which could really have serious effects on the supply chain. To me, I think it's wrong the way, the way they're doing things. The government needs to step in. Truck Association needs to do something about this. Talking with truck drivers Thursday in Hagerstown, there is a real sense of worry over the possibility of diesel shortages. I understand that we're in a COVID situation and all, but at the same token is, is that they got to come up with some kind of solution to this, solve this problem so we can move on in America. According to several trade publications, diesel supplies on the East Coast are now the lowest in almost 20 years. The Pilot Flying J company confirmed for 11 News that there are supply issues right now in several markets they serve. Writing in a statement, quote, we are aware of concerns over diesel supply in specific markets across the United States. We are closely monitoring the situation and strive to remain the most reliable network of travel centers for our customers. Just up I-81, same concerns from the Love's truck stop company telling us, quote, Love's is monitoring the fluid situation on the East Coast. We have experienced minimal outages during low traffic hours. It is always our mission to keep diesel stocked to fulfill our customers' commitment to keeping drivers on the road. You know, if we don't have diesel, we can't ride. And experts say with diesel fuel now surpassing labor as the industry's number one expense, fuel shortages could be devastating. If it's giving them concern, then certainly it's giving us a lot of concerns about, you know, the potential inability to, to purchase fuel, you know, at the pump and at, or rationing of fuel or anything that could occur. Back at the pilot, Larry Seacrest, who ironically delivers petroleum products, says he saw the shortages firsthand. They were out of diesel and gasoline. Um, Richmond was out completely, now is at the travel centers of America. So commerce will continue. However, these drivers tell us that something needs to give. So again, this is all covered by local media. It's literally happening where you have testimonies from truck drivers saying that some stations are out and we're going to look into that just a little bit more here before we get to that i did find the verse in acts while you all were watching that acts 11 28 all well, 27 through 28 now in these days prophets came down from Jer jerusalem to antioch and one of them named agabus stood by and foretold by the Spirit, that there would be a great famine all over the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So again, as I said, we have to prepare in faith. I, I feel very convicted. And scripture says in Revelation that you know there will be hyperinflation. Um, we don't know when and, and how bad it's going to get, but I think it's prudent to follow our faith as it dictates and, and to prepare for our families. So, again, this is all happening due to a lot of the situation happening with the bear country. Here's some more things that just have recently happened. May 10th, Ukraine suspends some... <laughs> I just why even call them the bear country? Russian gas flow, <laughs> blaming interference of occupying forces. So there's gas lines that run through Ukraine. And I think Germany and some other countries were getting their gas uh, from Russia. They decided to pay in rubles. Uh, Poland and I believe Bulgaria did not want to pay in rubles. So Russia completely shut them off. But because of what's happening in Ukraine, I think there's some people that were intending to pay with rubles and now you know, they have their gas flow interrupted. So that's going to cause more issues with energy supply in Europe. Here's another one. This is uh, from, let's see, yesterday. Uh, this was a foreign site that I translated, and it said that Russia will suspend electrical um, electricity supplies to Finland starting on May 14th. 
Electricity trading will be temporarily suspended due to the difficulties in accepting payments for electricity sold on the market. So again, going back to the whole, we will only give to you in rubles. So yeah, lots of things going on over in Europe with regards to energy insecurity. I mentioned this channel before, only look at it from a purely secular perspective. It's Sage News Live. Uh, he has, um, his job is in supply chains. So he, he has a lot of information about this. But he had an interesting theory about what's happening in China and this whole diesel shortage thing. I think it's a good potential theory to keep in mind. But what he said is, look at what's happened every time we do shutdowns and then we reopen. There was this really bad boomer, boomerang effect. So in the beginning, we have this normal type of supply chain, normal type of consumption of goods by people, and then you shut everything down and there's this big surplus and that's when we saw milk being dumped, produce being composted, massive amounts because it just had nowhere to go. The restaurants were shut down. Um, similarly with fuel, or, or actually with goods or anything, but then once everything started to ramp up, a lot of these places weren't ready to handle that burden. So it's like you flick the switch on and off, on and off, and it's like driving the Titanic. You turn the rudder and things don't really turn immediately. So when you turn things back on, it's it's hard to get those supplies to everyone, and then we start to see, see shortages. We saw that um, during the first wave, once, once things started to go back um, or started to open up, and it wasn't like essential only openings you know i think everyone was open but there was all the mask mandates and everything like that and there was there was a lot of supply issues he thinks that same thing's going to happen with regards to what's going on in china so we already have this diesel fuel shortage and interestingly he has this article shanghai authorities claim that the city will open up next week so middle of may and he said Right after Memorial Day is high freight time. It's one of the highest times for freight of the year. So again, you already have a diesel shortage and then you open up China and it creates even more hardship because now they're going to be consuming fuel. He says this could be another perfect storm to really ramp up the diesel prices. And he thinks it's intentional. He thinks this is economic warfare. And I, I tend to agree. However... Shanghai authorities are claiming that they're going to reopen. So we don't know if that's going to happen for sure. Because there's other articles like this where, you know, it says Shanghai from the Wall Street Journal, Shanghai's COVID lockdown gets tougher. And if one person tests positive, the whole building isolates. There's a lot of Twitter um, tweets that I'm seeing where people are saying there's even more gates and barrier erections going up. And so it makes you wonder what's really going to happen out there. We don't know. But I think they're in their seventh or eighth week right now. It, it's, it's really bad over there. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of rebellion stirring in China. I thought this was an incredible video. Chinese factory workers storm through COVID barriers. This is probably one of the um, biggest videos I've seen of like all out just trampling over barricades. <laughs> So, I mean, isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that all over the world we're seeing people getting this mindset of toppling over government authority? Not saying that it's, you know, not justified. I mean, it's. You know, people are you know starving in their apartment complexes and things like that. They, they can't handle it anymore. But it's very, very interesting from a spiritual perspective that everything that we're seeing over the past couple of years, everyone is going into the same types of events globally. Lockdowns, global. Um, food shortages, looks like it's going to be global. I mean, this really reads like Revelation, where the whole world is going through the same types of things. And... Again, the response globally is very similar, where there's a hatred of government globally everywhere. It's very, very interesting spiritually. 
Beijing, I talked about this. There's lots of tweets of saying that Beijing might be the next city to fall for lockdown. So here's one. Things are getting real in Beijing. After rumors popped up that the capital would be in a Shanghai-like lockdown starting tomorrow, people are lining up to stock up on food. There's lots of panic buying. Here's another person. Lots of rumors of a three-day lockdown. Lots of denials. Much panic buying. No taxis, no subway, but we had a perfect sunset. Beijing Terminal 3 is a ghost town. Used to be one of the busiest airports in the world. Now just three flights out all day and everything was shut. So, yeah, these major, major cities, some of the the top largest cities in terms of like population and economic output are all being shut down. We have not yet begun to see the global impact of that. Another person, another pick from my dad in Beijing today. They are testing every day now. And again, these, this daily testing is what preluded the, the lockdown. So everyone's, again, panic buying the food. They don't understand they will never get zero um, this. <laughs> dad has lived in China for over 20 years, and he said it's like living in a horror film now. So again, it's, it's really tough out there. They, they really need our prayers, especially our Christian brethren. And again, mainstream media. News.com, uh, Australia. Fears of supply chain chaos grow amid rumors of Beijing's first ever COVID lockdown looms. Outside of China, North Korea announces its first deaths with regards to this among an explosive outbreak. So it seems like they're sort of, uh, they're locking down things China style. So those two countries have always sort of been in lockstep with one another. But, um, uh, just another data point for you to consider. All right, moving on outside of uh, that region. Inflation. So the CPI, I think they had an 8.3%, which is way, way low. I mean, it's all manipulated. I think everyone knows that at this point. But wholesale inflation climbs to 11%, which was above analyst predictions of 10.7%. And if you look at this, they said, I think they've said it's the worst inflation uh, for 40 years. Yep, this is near a 40-year high result. And if you look at the chart, you can see it doesn't really look like there's any stopping this. Even though government said that, uh, I think the Federal Reserve said they think that we're, at, we're at the peak. But again, it doesn't look like it at all, especially what you're seeing happen with diesel. Because that impacts everything. Um, you have a shortage on diesel, diesel, and diesel runs everything. Even the, the fuel that you get delivered to the pumps it gets there by a diesel truck. Everything runs on diesel. Here's another comparison. Anyone who thinks the CPI will come down or the CPI is accurate, dig this. So here is the CPI for rent. And CPI is the consumer price index. It is about inflation for goods and services where the wholesale inflation is just on goods. So that's why you see there's a little bit of differentiation with the 11% versus the CPI, which is 8.3%. Um, but Zillow rent index versus the CPI rent index. You can see the disparity between the two trend lines. Talking about rents and mortgages. So latest interest rate hike sends mortgage rates soaring into rates not seen since housing crisis of 2009. So WLWT5, that's a Cincinnati station. Just the title itself conveys a lot of meaning here that people are well aware of the housing crash during that time. And they're saying, eh, we're, we're basically there again. So again, collapse type narrative is really becoming common knowledge whether people want to believe it or not i've had friends ask me about cryptocurrencies and whether that's a safe haven honestly i don't think anything's safe um cryptocurrencies they're all down like 50 or more percent uh, they call it the perfect storm i'm not going to get into a lot of details on this i mean you can just take a look at bitcoin because most most cryptos follow bitcoin it's down like 55% in the past six months. People have lost tons and tons of money. Uh, some people think it's going to rebound, but the thing that you need to be aware about is there are some there are some cryptos out there, and I'm not an expert of crypto. I've just watched a couple videos just to know enough to stay away from it. There are some cryptos, I think Tether is one, where they said that they would only create one crypto coin for every dollar that they had in reserves, but they're not regulated. So no one's really even checking to see 
how much dollars they have in reserve dollar currency. Again, that may not be Tether, but it's, it's definitely some of them out there. They, they say that you know they're going to have a reserve of a one-to-one ratio of crypto coin to, um, to dollar. So people think it's like very stable, type of stable coin. Again, they're not regulated, though. And you can see that the majority of people that own those coins is in the hands of just a few. And so what some people, some crypto experts are saying is that, you know, the crypto market, people think it's like this free bastion of liberty. Do you really think it can't be manipulated either? Some people think that, you know, government entities are basically flooding these stable coins, Tether and whatever, creating tons and tons and tons of these crypto coins without any dollar backing. And then those tethers are used to buy Bitcoin and prop up Bitcoin. And it's all funny money at that point. Um, Again, it's to think that there was absolutely no way that central banks or governments or elites could manipulate crypto. I mean, that's, you, you know that they can. You know that they can. And so it seems like Again, every good thing is being taken away as we started this broadcast talking about the scriptures. Um, you really, your safe haven is with the Lord. It's not in gold. It's not in silver. It's not in food. Um, what does the scripture say? Seek first the kingdom of heaven and then all other things will be added to you. He'll take care of you. Make sure that you're not losing sight of the Lord amongst all these other things. Because again, if you start to get in prepping and you get a little too obsessed with it, you, your mind just starts going everywhere. I need food. I need water. I need shelter. I need to think about protecting my finances. I need to think about security and medicine. And you, you can just, boom, it just goes all over the place. But keep your sights on the Lord. With regards to the bird flu and everything happening there, uh, this article, the food crisis worsens as there's a small recall that grew to half a million pounds of chicken being pulled from shelves. A uh, major food processing company that has cooked chicken found out that a lot of it wasn't cooked properly. And so again, another half a million pounds of chicken just gone. I mean, I think there are up to 37 or 38 million chickens called. And then I don't know how many, how much that translates into millions of pounds of chicken. But again, another, another impact. And I mentioned this in the last live stream, but I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Some people think that all these fires happening to all the food processing plants and this event that happened to the um, the cooked chicken being undercooked and uh, all these various things happening all over the world they think that it's intricately controlled by the elites like everything is being dictated by a very small group of people and i think to a degree that may be true but i think sometimes it border borderlines on on true conspiracy not conspiracy fact just true conspiracy i don't think that every single one of these events all although they're major with regards to like the fires and things like that that it can all be tied back to someone communicating someone to do that but what i do believe going back to the scriptures and how i believe that we're in a period of judgment and the lord is taking every good thing away for people to repent this is all driven centrally if you think about it spiritually some of these fires may be arson true arson Uh, some of them may be dictated by the elites some of them may be from owners who are getting freaked out over everything that's happening and they feel they're going to lose their business so they they want to just you know do the arson themselves and collect insurance money it can be any variety of motivations that aren't linked to one group or body of people but it is all driven centrally if you think about it spiritually uh, because again we, we are going into famine and I think all these things are sort of leading leading up to that here's another one talking about grains I got two articles on this talking about Ukraine a huge backlog of grain shipments totaling nearly 25 million tons is stranded in Ukraine and unable to be transported out of the country and you have to think about a lot of those farms aren't going to be sowed with seed because of what's happening out there as well in the other video, we also talked about you know all the fertilizer prices. Fertilizer, I don't know how many years record it is, but it it's it may be like the highest ever. High Plains Journal: seventy-seven percent of Texas wheat in poor to very poor condition. And if you look at some of the other states that are wheat outputters, uh, the numbers aren't very good. So Texas is really high up on there. New Mexico, 
another state that has very high drought conditions. 54% uh, very poor, 31% poor. So you're looking at 85%. Some other states are doing all right, but Montana, nearly over a quarter, very poor to poor. Colorado, nearly 50%, very poor to poor. Kansas, same thing, um, almost a third. So you've got climate issues affecting the food. You've got man-made issues like war affecting the food. You've got you know, potential acts of arson and things like that. But again, it's all, if you think about it spiritually and, and the time that we're heading into, it's all driven to one purpose. I touched base uh, several videos ago about Sri Lanka, and there was another country as well talking about the food riots have started. It was it was that video I did a couple weeks ago. But again, the, they're, they're seeing high inflation. They think, uh, you know, the government is very corrupt. And they are pushed to the brink, as this tweet implies. Uh, you can see them chasing and running down police officers and, and beating them. It's all about rebellion against authority who has hurt them. And I think we're going to see this globally. You're going to see outrage globally at government institutions. And lastly, with Trump, only two articles on this, and then... We'll go ahead and we'll cut this live stream short, maybe at about 45 minutes. Trump. Talked about a lot on Trump, you know, many, many months ago, and then every so often I'll give you a casual update on him. He's still in the scenes. Uh, he hosted this MAGA ball at Mar-a-Lago where Kyle Rittenhouse, um, you know, lots of, lots of people were there for the 2000 this film and you can see he's having a good old time I don't know if anything is going to come from this film I personally was thinking maybe something would come out of the Arizona audit with cyber ninjas and all that but nothing really did uh, it remains to be seen if anything comes from this but this is making waves um, on the political right and he's he's still trucking he's still keeping his influence which I thought would wane after a year, but he's he's still there. And most people in the Republican Party are all seeking his um, you know, his, his uh, approval, seeking his endorsement. And so I just thought it was interesting. His truth social media account, he's now started to post on that. And uh, he put out this one uh, sort of a spoof on Lord of the Rings, The Return of the Great Maga King, which a lot of people who are aware of the Latin word Maga is like witch. <laughs> the Return of the Great Witch King. I'm, I'm reading a book right now. That, um, there's a brother, Jonathan Dane. Me and him are conversing. I'm only at about like 80 pages right now, but uh, he's got this book, Rise of the Little Horn. He believes Trump is the Antichrist. I don't believe yet Trump is the Antichrist. I don't have enough information to fully commit to say that. Um, he is on my short list, though. And, um, you know, what I'm reading about in here is I, I knew Trump was bad spiritually, and I've covered him a lot on this channel and, and all the things he's done and why he's not a true Christian and he's lying about that. But um, some of the some of the personal accounts that he has in here, you know, he's looked at books and articles and interviews of people that has, have interfaced with Trump throughout his life. There is some really, really wicked stuff that he's done. And he is a very vengeful person. I mean, some of the things he's done to former wives and family, it is grotesque. It is, it is, it is very, very bad. Very bad. And... I say all that because he is a very vengeful person. And there was an old clip uh, where he, there was someone interviewing him about getting even with people that have hurt him. And Trump said, yeah, I'm going to get even. I'm going to wipe the floor with them. This man has a history of vengeance and not just getting even, but destroying those who have hurt him. And so my opinion, looking at his character 
is that all the hurt that the left has thrown towards him and his family and the disgrace and a lot of the people on the right, those quote-unquote rhinos who have betrayed him and thrown him to the quote-unquote wolves, I don't see him just sitting on his hands and just fading away. Uh, you know, he, The amount of disrespect he has had from those people paired with that type of personality... I think I think you know he he is really bent on vengeance. Now whether he has the means uh, to enact on that vengeance, I don't know. There might be some debate on that. Regardless of how vengeant he may want to be, maybe he doesn't have the opportunity to. But I can tell you, just you know, reading through this book and, and getting more of an understanding of his relationships with people on a personal level and his family and his wife. I mean, he's. Uh, you sort of know what is at least in his head what he wants to do. Remember that one communication he put out saying uh, with regards to the that one report that uh, said that Hillary was indeed spying on him and everything? He said, if we were at a stronger point in our country, uh, these people would have faced death. I'm just paraphrasing. So you can already see, you know, what he wants. If we were stronger, we could go ahead and, and you know, try these people for treason and put them to death. That is essentially what he wants. Again, whether he has the means to and, and what he's preparing, if anything, that's another story. But he's still there. And it surprises me even after a year. And his influence is still there. So we still watch him. Because in terms of all of the candidates of playing a major role in Revelation, whether you think he's the Antichrist or not, he's, he's definitely someone that is influential spiritually in this whole thing so with that i'll leave you guys and hope you have a good night i am still working on a interesting video about the church fathers and why they believe the restrainer was government something you actually don't hear too much but as i mentioned during the techno dance party which you may not that you may not have caught in the last live stream it's just very interesting. I'm not I'm not dogmatic in saying government is the restrainer because, again, there's some, some things that just don't quite line up. But it's something that I don't see many people talk about. It's interesting that the church fathers thought that government, specifically the Roman government, was the restrainer during their time. And you have all people of the world wanting to rebel and overthrow government because they want to have their freedom back. And it makes you think that if government is the restrainer and worldwide something happens to where people of the world are infuriated and overthrow government and Second Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about unless the restrainer is removed you know, then the lawless one will be revealed. Um, you, it really sort of makes sense that if the world goes into chaos because of people overthrowing government it really makes way for someone antichrist to come in and fill that void so again not dogmatic about that at all but i do want to study it and i do want to convey what i've learned just so we keep it as a possibility because again i think when it happens wh whoever or whatever the restrainer is when it happens i know that the spirit will convict god's children appropriately during that time not everything needs to be revealed way ahead of time um, as we've seen throughout scripture, you know, where the apostles didn't really know what the purpose Jesus was here for. Uh, but then, you know, the spirit gave them knowledge afterwards. The spirit's going to give us knowledge when these things happen. But I think we still need to be Bereans and, and tease out all these various different possibilities. So with that, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Hope this bless you and see you in the next video. Bye.